Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about hydrogen fuel. Is it the fuel of future? So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what the heck is hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is the first. What does that mean? That basically means it's the first element after the Big Bang and the first element in the periodic table. Everything came after it from its reaction in fission or fusion. Generally, uh, you only do basically fusion with hydrogen, but you get the point. So basically this puppy came and then everything else came afterwards. Now this is very reactive, which is kind of odd given the fact the second element is helium, which simply does not give a time. It's like, no, no, I'm, I'm cool. I'm not gonna react with anything. Now hydrogen on the other hand is very reactive to a wide variety of elements for example it can bond with carbon and it can also bond with oxygen and when it does with oxygen bonding it is an exothermic reaction which is the interesting part for us that it gives a lot of energy output now to uh, give a context of that amount of energy is that its energy density basically how much oomph you're gonna get out of like you know one kilogram of it is gg basically we don't count it simply because it's the highest there is unless you are going in nuclear or antimatter basically as a chemical data point it's gg level powerful now you might be like okay let's say it has that much power generally anything that has that kind of power has a very serious side effect or byproduct this puppy has water as a byproduct basically you're going to take hydrogen you're going to take oxygen you're going to burn this puppy you're going to get a lot of energy out what would be the final byproduct the final byproduct would be water now here's the interesting one the final byproduct is water but water can also be made into hydrogen because of the reactive nature of hydrogen you're not gonna have okay there is a mine that extracts oxygen we have a gas well that gives us hydrogen that's not gonna happen because it reacts too much so if you have to create hydrogen you can do that you can simply do that with water and if you've been to a school and those schools were of any decent quality there is a very good chance they would have made you do this experiment of electrolysis basically take a uh, basically big battery you need a bit of oomph so like you know six volt battery or 12 volt battery and just you know put it uh, inside a water system with a bit of baking soda acting as a catalyst so you get the point it's doable we know how to do this it has gg amount of energy and it is non pollutant basically the exhaust of this can literally be sent to your uh, lungs and it will not cause harm any chemical wise again if you send directly it would be very hot steam that may burn you but uh, chemically wise it's like no it's your body can like i got this i can handle this and every life form on this planet can handle this so what's the problem if it's that awesome why don't we use it well uh, whenever we talk about density you have to understand it's always described with a temperature data point for example even in industry of where we measure things for example let's say steel rails concrete things of this nature solid things you always measure them on a temperature for example in engineering precise engineering everything is measured at 20 degrees c you're not supposed to measure something at like you know 35 degrees c because it changes the freaking density changes now very little but it could have giant impact you're literally your building can like you know grow or shrink same thing happened with gases when you're talking about hydrogen hydrogen is a gas because it's very light and consequence of that at room temperature like you know normal c uh, level room temperature it's very 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 low density for example one kilogram of hydrogen versus one kilogram of jet fuel jet fuel is like i don't even stand a chance it's like not even funny anymore but one liter of hydrogen versus one liter of jet fuel is like jet fuel will be like bro what like what what bro no that's the whole point fundamentally kilogram awesome liter joke then we come to another aspect is like okay how will you increase the density if you want to increase it you basically cool it down to this is the highest density you can achieve at minus 253 100 degrees celsius yes it literally goes below liquid nitrogen you have to cool it down to that level you are almost touching absolute zero basically how cold anything can get so fundamentally it's very difficult to do and even if you did that even if you got to somehow liquefy uh, you know hydrogen which we do know how to do that's how we are sending uh, you know people to moon and rockets and all that jazz it does work we know how to do it there is another side effect if you want to use that as common everyday fuel it's near impossible to contain for example if you take a normal propane tank it's like okay this is a normal tank it got the pressure handling capacity everything is cool and you're not putting cryogenic fluid and you're like okay i'm just gonna put high pressure uh, hydrogen into that here's the deal it simply is gonna like literally evaporate through the metal like if you look metal under a microscope you will find what we call grain boundaries basically there are crystals and these have gaps in them now hydrogen because of it being small and it's a reactive nature it's like nope it can literally nope through itself 
consequence you can literally take a very strong metal if like i'm gg i'm i can handle any stress it can literally shatter like a glass so fundamentally it's very hard to contain and that's at normal temperature i'm not even talking about cryogenic temperature at cryogenic temperature handling liquid hydrogen it's fundamentally difficult task like there are people whose sole job is to figure out how to make a metal level that can handle this puppy long term so it's not easy and that's at cryogenic a uh, room temperature is a joke so how do we produce it? Well, production, like again, uh, you can produce it out of uh, basically using normal water. Consequence of that is inherently how the you know physics works. It's like if you're going to get one megawatt of oomph out of it, one megawatt of energy out of it, you have to put one megawatt in. You cannot get free lunch. So fundamentally, you will like, okay, that means it's just a battery. Basically, at that point, hydrogen is behaving like an energy carrier. You are just putting energy into it and then you're going to extracting whenever you need to. Fundamentally, that's absolutely true, but you have to consider inefficiencies. Nothing is 100% efficient. So fundamentally, when you do the whole equation, it's like, okay, I'm going to put an electrical energy. How much energy I'm going to get at the other end? Like even even just chemical energy the efficiency is very low like you if you would be lucky if you're gonna get uh, like you know 60 70 percent efficiency you'll be very lucky so fundamentally energy wise it's very expensive there are industrial processes there are factories that produce hydrogen on scale by consuming water and electricity consequence of those are they have very energy intensive and the sole reason nobody uh, like anybody does that is that there is a simpler way of doing it that's basically you are consuming fuel you take basically steam reforming now steam reforming because of its low energy requirement is the primary way of producing hydrogen so if you buy one liter of liquid hydrogen most of the time it's going to come from literally fossil fuel like what the hell that's why that's why you can technically use the fuel to make different kind of fuel so you're going to take heat lot of heat and then you're gonna take steam which is uh, you know uh, high temperature water so to say and then you can mix it with methane methane is a primary component of natural gas that's why it says why uh, fossil fuel generally it's a use using in that and then you're gonna reform it what's gonna happen is basically at that high temperature water is no longer stable and if you have something like uh, basically methane it's also not stable so none of these things are stable so they want to pair down to a stabler state so the stabler state is basically uh, water molecules gonna be like nope so you have hydrogen, you have oxygen. That oxygen is gonna bond with basically carbon. It's gonna make carbon dioxide and you're gonna get different uh, hydrogen elements, so to say. So fundamentally, that's what we do. So basically you are consuming methane as a fuel to make hydrogen as a fuel. So yes, it's a less energy intensity, but you are fundamentally, you know, consuming fuel. You are just, it's just a fossil fuel with extra steps. So whenever you think about like, uh, you know, um, British government, like literally changing a uh, hydro, uh, you know, their home heating grid to hydrogen, uh, they are literally doing the same thing. They are extracting natural gas from the ground up and they are removing the carbon part and then putting back carbon uh, part into the ground and, you know, sending the hydrogen. So basically it's inherently carbon, uh, it's good if you can guarantee that carbon dioxide will never leach, uh, leach out again which again we do not know we don't have enough long-term data so fundamentally production wise electrolysis sounds awesome but once you see the energy cost you're like whoa at that point it's like nope most people don't even touch it so reality is most of the time when you're talking about hydrogen is literally made out of basically fundamentally fossil fuel so what about cars like uh, this was the main thing like even bush talked about it so to say so first cars were made as, as in like combustion car engine that was using hydrogen as a fuel uh, that is in 1806 you're know, like wait a minute that's a bit too old yes a lot of people have figured this out long ago now to give you a context of that bmw made a functional car that you can go out and buy in market uh hydrogen 7 that was released and in for market uh, around 2005 to 2007 did not work that well toyota did that um, basically audi also did that almost every com uh, major car company have done this one way or the another sooner or later they have done this reality is flat out hydrogen does not work as a car fuel flat out nope it's a no system simple reason is uh, you need to change everything i specified like every metal in your car have to be designed in such a way that what will happen to it if hydrogen keeps leaking constantly and most metal are not designed for hydrogen embrittlement like you can manage it we know how to do that it's just that it's expensive and another aspect was uh, when you're using combustion engine benefit you don't have to change too much tooling consequence hydrogen has a ludicrously high rpm on engine requirement basically you want the rpm to be low that's why diesel engine runs for so long and uh, you take a shipping container engines that are running at like you know 500 rpm and you take a petrol engine that's a very very high that's around uh, 6000 to 10000 rpm you don't want that high hydrogen is at 25000 so ludicrously difficult like uh, whenever uh, you know reporters were testing this they were like dude this is very quiet uh, the engineer explained it. the reason is so quiet is was so loud that we have to spend so much time into like you know isolating the noise from this 
that they got the like they had a lot of R&D poured into just to isolate the sound noise. Benefit was it was very quiet, but it was not quite quiet. It was not quite as an efficient quiet. It was quite as in like we have suppressed it. So fundamentally, it did not work out. And you might be like, okay, that's uh, inefficient, and that's what's polluting also. They're like, wait a minute, how the heck hydrogen is polluting? Hydrogen is there awesome you have oxygen in the atmosphere awesome but here's the when you're sucking in basically your piston is doing uh, you know sucking a stroke basically sucking everything in it's also sucking in nitrogen nitrogen and oxygen in high temperature environment creates what we call nox which is not good for your health this puppy was doing that so fundamentally it was no better than uh, basically efficient petrol engine like yes no carbon dioxide awesome and a little amount of uh, nox production but again it was not clean so what was the point 100% clean you cannot say that if you are producing nox so people change to uh, hydrogen fuel cell benefit higher efficiency this was at like 25% efficiency in like how much energy you had in your uh, fuel versus how much energy was put into the wheels awesome 25% which is like more or less same as uh, you know petrol diesel or something like that uh, then people went to hydrocarbon uh, basically fuel cells now these fuel cells were much better you got you were getting around 50% efficiencies awesome consequence it was ludicrously expensive and inherently in manufacturing complexity is the enemy of reliability you don't want complex things now uh, internal combustion engine those are complex this puppy made them look like a joke because you had to make a complete electric car you have to make a battery you have to make an inverter you have to make a motor everything like an electric car and then you add a fuel cell then you add a fuel tank or might as well just remove the fuel tank and fuel cell and just increase the battery size you have a battery car so fundamentally it's electric car with extra steps so it did not work out that well like toyota did that audi did that every company did that it just does not work out an electric car at this point in time is mainstream as in i have seen it i have uh, like you know uh, many people who actually have bought this in india in uh, bangalore in mumbai uh, mahindra evo is quite successful like again it's not like every tom dick and harry has it but like it is slowly capturing markets where if i ask you the hydrogen one no and not to mention electric uh, cars can be easily without any hassle can be charged inside your home without any issue but you cannot do that with hydrogen. You need infrastructure. For electric cars, you have the infrastructure. So fundamentally, it's not a good fuel for car. People have tried it, it's done. Game over, it is not good fuel. Now, what about power storage? Many times, uh, specifically in uh, many European nations, specifically one that have like, you know, a lot of, not a lot of natural resources, they are like, we are using wind, we are using solar, but we need a way to store electricity. So power storage sounds good. Now, it does allow for two good things. First, long-term storage. Basically, you can store as long as you can store hydrogen you can store the energy so fundamentally you can literally like hey in summer we are producing too much let's say too much solar power and in uh, let's say rainy seasons yeah like you know uh, summer winter uh, autumn let's say in autumn you are producing a lot of wind energy awesome but here's the in winter you don't have any of those here's the the energy that you store is like seasons ago you can still use it if you are producing hydrogen hydrogen is storable in long term and it's scalable so for example let's say something uh, happened where you like you know two uh, like a lot of people left somewhere else and like you know power consumption dropped and you have to scale up your power system because like again you can't just have a uh, uh, wasted energy because otherwise you have to shut down turbines you're like i don't want to shut turbine i want to ex extract that energy you want to, you can just keep buying extra storage tank and keep uh, scaling the power system so that's awesome Here's the deal. The reason why nobody is interested in doing that is simply it's ludicrously uh, you know, inefficient. Now, if you have infinite energy source, you don't need these things, but we don't. So you have a limited wind uh, turbines, you have limited solar farms, you have limited biogas systems, everything is limited. So in those sort of scenario, inefficiency is very critical. For example, if I give you one megawatt, go YOLO on this one megawatt. And if you waste 60% of it, just trying to freaking store it, what's the point? Like, what's the point? You literally have to scale up, like, and you will only get minor benefits. Yeah, I can store it, but again, it's a boom thing. You have to handle it very carefully. You have to be very careful. And it, in other scenarios, it's much more difficult to contain than LPG. So inefficiencies are a very serious issue. What does inefficiency here mean? Simply because you are taking energy from one format, for example, electrical energy, and you're not changing into like electrochemical energy like batteries. You are taking that and you're converting it completely into chemical energy. You're just like, okay, I'm gonna put it into elemental hydrogen. Fundamentally, that's a lot of steps and that requires a lot of energy uh, wastage. Another aspect is you're not ever gonna store hydrogen just, okay, this is hydrogen, I'm gonna store it. No, you're gonna take it, you're gonna compress it and because you are compressing it, it's gonna heat up, which is not good for storage system so you want to cool it down again not cryogenically cool it down but at least cool it down to let's say 20 degrees celsius or maybe even more than that like so it can slowly expand in the tank 
those will also consume energy and once you are actually have that gas like okay everything is done power uh, collection has been done now you want to extract that power you have to send it through fuel cell fuel cells are also not 100 percent efficient because they are taking chemical and they are creating electrical energy they will also generate a lot of waste heat so fundamentally it's not that efficient so if you take one megawatt in how much you got out it's very less like you have at best case in a lab case like gg amount of technology you are poured into like billion dollar cells and all that then you are getting 30 percent loss at that point in time in real life it's like 60 percent loss so and because of the scalable factor but if you went to someone it's like okay i need the ability to store let's say one gigawatt hour of capacity that like you want uh, you know to run a basically town at night so to say people will say go pumped hydro it's been here we have been building this for like 150 years at this point in time it works it's a known technology and it's capable of gigawatt scale at this point in time and if you're like uh, what about if i have to run a small village like a small town and all that can lithium ion do that yes because it has 95 percent uh, you know efficiency so fundamentally if you got one megawatt in uh, you will be only uh, you know losing a little bit you will be losing in kilowatts not like 50 percent of it so fundamentally as power storage this is not a very good solution yes in some niche scenarios i can see it being used but in most scenarios like if static storage uh, lithium ion is better if you have the uh, place and location pumped hydro is better heck gravity city basically just pulling a weight up uh, during charge cycle and dropping it at discharge cycle that's also much more efficient so fundamentally as a power storage it's not that efficient so I have said like, okay, it's not good for this, not uh, is it good for anything? Yes. One thing it's very perfectly suited for is shipping industry. The reason for that is shipping industry can utilize this puppy without any compromises. Because you have to understand, if you want to use liquid hydrogen as a like, you know, jet plane fuel, it's fundamentally difficult and good luck trying to get clearance, safety clearance for that. Like rockets have escape tower if it goes boom. You don't have escape towers or something like that in plane. So fundamentally getting like approval for human rating for a, like, you know, liquid hydrogen aircraft, Let's say only military tried that. So what do I mean? Like they can utilize this without any compromise. Liquid hydrogen needs pro handling. It's a cryogenic system. Everything has to be designed and tailor made for that. And people have to be very careful. This is not something, oh, it's gonna give me frostbite. It's gonna take away your hand. It's not gonna give you frostbite. It's gonna take away your hand. So fundamentally you need professionals handling this. It's not something that you are comfortable around. Ah, that petrol pump has liquid hydrogen. No, 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 no. you don't want that. So thankfully, shipping industry is already used to this kind of technology which we call lng liquefied natural uh, natural gas fundamentally same thing it's methane uh, so it's not as cold as liquid hydrogen but fundamentally same technology same kind of uh, cryogenic environment same kind of uh, procedures another aspect is liquid hydrogen is not very dense so you have to use a huge tank these ships they want huge tanks like many times uh, the ships when they are empty they will have a very serious uh, you know stability issue because inherently they are designed with like okay i want to be loaded i want to be solid so i can stable in the sea uh, sea so for them they can handle it they have the skill set they have the scope physical scope like you can put a very giant tank which is very efficient in terms of insulation because you have to spend a lot of time in insulation wise and they have already so much experience and given the fact that uh, basically this industry uses what we call heavy fuel oil what does that mean that simply means it's almost crude oil at this point in time it is ludicrously polluting like here's the deal nobody gives a damn about carbon dioxide anymore because like people have been burnt like whatever the case people don't give a damn but every damn person gives a damn about nox emission because you can smell it like it sucks like it, you go into places which have a lot of nox emission like dude i don't feel well like fundamentally your body will scream like dude it's not a good place and sulfur oxide yeah you can smell that puppy so uh, because it's using such a crude kind of fuel it's inherently polluting toxic level wise and everybody is like no we cannot keep using this we don't want to use that so hydrogen takes care of that yes it will be uh, you know basically running on natural gas at that point in time if you truly want to do this and if you want to do this on an electrical system you can do that like yes it will be a bit extra inefficient but alternate does not exist for what what can we do with avionics avionics we can simply utilize what we call lg biodiesel that's the best system for them but for shipping hydrogen is the best because they can consume so much that lg biofuel is simply not going to be able to provide and they have the technology they are basically all uh, modern shipping system they utilize electric propulsion flat out all of them have uh, giant diesel generators they are pumping more uh, basically generator that generator is creating electricity that electricity is going to inverter system inverter is driving the propeller through a motor system so all they have to change is basically the generator and uh, motor system basically uh, the combustion engine system and that will be changed with a fuel cell which is much smaller given megawatt rating it's much smaller uh, than the equivalent one and only big thing will be tank size 
which is manageable when you are talking about something that is size of a football field so shipping industry is really looking forward to this and given the fact that it is ludicrously polluting people are like yeah we can like you know it's like right tool for the right job hydrogen is very well suited for this puppy so this was my presentation on uh, hydrogen as a future fuel source. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me a disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.